Live from San Francisco, California, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE, covering DockerCon 2015. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media, with special thanks to Docker. Now your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live at DockerCon 2015 in downtown San Francisco. I think we're actually underneath Yerba Buena Gardens, if I mapped out kind of our subterranean path to get here at the San Francisco Marriott. We're excited to be here, the second DockerCon ever, and we're joined, of course, by Stu Miniman. Welcome, Stu, from Wikibon. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, really exciting. I mean, uh, you and I were talking before we started this. If I look at all the shows we went to last year, DockerCon was my favorite last year. It was, uh, so uh, the numbers that Ben Golub went through this morning, he said we've got 2,000 people here this year. Uh, that's, it's sold out pretty quick. I heard the wait list was over 500. Um, and if it was 500 people on the wait list, that's how many people were at the show last year. So it was a quarter of the size and about an eighth of the space last year. Uh, I think it was at the St. Regis, like right okay. around the corner here last year. Um, and the reason I loved that show last year was, you know, where else did I get to really geek out listening to companies like, you know, Google, Yahoo and Facebook talking about this new thing called containers that right, well right. it's not necessarily a new thing but you know it's something that is, is really hit uh, you know market momentum and Docker's helping to bring that out there the project the ecosystem a lot going on so drill down a little bit so last year was the first Docker con right uh, 2014 this is the second like you said I think it's four times bigger about 2,000 people here we've had Ben on we've had Solomon on a couple times at Red Hat Summit I remember seeing them at AWS uh, Summit San Francisco 2013, these Docker guys. So why the momentum, Stu? What is going on here that's driving it? We, we talked a little bit before that we were at Spark last week, Spark was the hottest thing uh, going on in the internet space last week, but here we are at Docker. It's really a different paradigm. Yeah, so uh, Solomon Hikes, who's the, the founder of the company, CTO, in his keynote this morning, he said the mission of the company is to build tools of mass innovation. Uh, ben Golub, when he talked about it, said, you know, he's looking for something that's going to have a global impact. Um, and it's interesting because when you look at what containerization and Docker is doing, you're saying, is it cloud? You know, is it modern apps? So, you know, what is it doing? Um, and I look at it as really that, that catalyst um, to help unshackle us from what infrastructure has been holding us in the past. But that's a real tough thing to do because while virtualization created a layer of abstraction, um, it broke a ton of things. So, you know, we spent the last decade fixing the storage and the networking problems uh, caused by the virtual machine. And, you know, if a container which sits on top of the operating system creates new opportunities for software development, it, it's the, the guy from uh, AWS got on the keynote this morning, he said, imagine if I could build some code, I could run the exact same code on my laptop as I can in Amazon. I said, that is powerful stuff so that, uh, you know, when you, we, at last year at Red Hat Summit, when we talked to Solomon and a lot of uh, people like Dell and, uh, and Red Hat uh, and, and everything, and we were just learning about Docker, we said, why is this so important? When you write code, there's so much of that code is, how does it work with what sits underneath it, and if I can really standardize some of that and make it so that it'll work across a lot of environments, it, it just speeds up my application development and makes it much more easy to run it in tons of environment as opposed to saying that, you know, oh, this only runs here, this runs there. Um, you know, it, it's going to enable cloud, it's going to enable, um, maybe it's not portability, but there's a lot of places I can put my workloads, and that should speed up the creation of you know, more distributed applications, which is where you know, we all see the future of applications going. Right, so it's funny, because we talk about consumerization of IT all the time it shows, and, and, and I was explaining to someone yesterday about Docker, what is Docker, and I said, you know, it's kind of like if you download the Snapchat app, you don't have to tell the app whether you're on an Android device or an iOS device or a six or a five or a four or whatever, it really takes that complexity away. So we're, this is really kind of the, the next gen of that for enterprise applications. And as Solomon was talking in the keynote, they're not thinking about applications, they're looking at a whole different layer of control. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, uh, we're going to have Adrian Cockroft on a little bit later today, and we're going to talk about microservices with Adrian. So, um, it, it's really a new way of building things, because Jeff, you know, you, you give the example of an app on a phone, well, the problem is, if I upgrade my operating system of the phone, or I update the, the app, sometimes things break, and that's where, you know, there's the problem. Uh, one of the big things 
talked about uh, in the keynote today. Uh, a, couple, a lot of things. So we're, we're going to go through some of the announcements here, Jeff. But let's start with, um, you know, there is that interaction between what's happening at the software layer and what's happening in that infrastructure, the plumbing. Um, you know, Ben, when I first talked to him about Docker, says we should be able to separate infrastructure management from application management, but you know, that's a lot of hard work that goes into that uh, to make sure that it works seamlessly. Um, there, there's some kind of holes in the you know, stack today. There's lots of things that are in kind of experimental phases. Um, and, and Jeff, I want to point out, this is really early days, and that's why one of the reasons I'm super excited to be here. I mean, we've got, I love our setup here. We've got the Docker booth behind me. Right. We've got the audience right behind you. You know, people are just geeking out on this stuff, digging in, everybody's like excited. A lot of them are contributing to it. You know, we spent time at you know OpenStack. We're going to be at Red Hat this week. You know, talk about the open source momentum and how many people are contributing to the code. So while Docker, the company, now has 150 employees, there's over 1,300 contributors to kind of core Docker, uh, you know, project on GitHub. Right. So it's really the network effect. What we're talking, lots of projects. You know, uh, God, what was the stat that uh, Ben threw out there? Um, you talk about uh, how many meetups they're doing. There's 185 meetup groups happening in 85 countries. Wow. So you know, you say, how does a little company of that was 42 employees last year and 150 this year? You know. They're valued at over a billion dollars when they did less than $10 million worth of revenue from industry sources. So how <laughs> so does nice a company multiple. like that have such a huge ripple through the ecosystem? Uh, you know, and, and it's because of that network effect and there's that, that, that real need to be able to uh, create that next generation of applications, which is what all the programmers are working on. Yeah, well, it's interesting because open source continues to be a driver of innovation of which it's very hard to compete with if you're not open source. Having a really dedicated community that's behind something of course, that begs the question, do you have an excited, engaged community, developer community that's always talked to at all these shows we go to, right? How can I get developers more excited about my products? But I got to tell you, let's shift gears and talk about the ecosystem, because walking down to our, our set here, and we are again, downtown San Francisco, at the back of the hall by the DockerCon booth, there's a lot of big name companies uh, with displays and sponsorships here. This is not about a bunch of little startups. There's a lot of big enterprise players here. So talk about who's in the ecosystem, the importance of the ecosystem, and how that's really helping jumpstart this thing. Yeah, so, so Jared, Jeff, in the keynote actually, they gave out this little Lego which is the Docker boat, and if you go to every single booth here, they have little Lego bricks with the, the logos of the company doing there, and they say, so you can take you know, your applications and software and build your own little you know, Lego set. So, good little swag to bring home uh, to there, but you're, you're right, I mean, big companies here, Jeff, uh, companies like IBM, uh, you know, companies like AWS, we talked about Google, EMC, uh, you know, Microsoft. Uh, you know, Microsoft, absolutely, Microsoft's going to be our first guest going right, on right. here, uh, you know, and, you know, so so many companies here uh, that are, you know are understanding uh, that this is going to help them. Uh, you know, an example I gave of how important this is. Last year, Red Hat delayed the release of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, the next release, by almost six months to make Docker a first-class citizen. Amazon, in the keynote this morning, talked about how you know when it was like less than a month when Docker launched it. Customers were coming to them and saying that you know this is important, so they wanted to treat Docker as a first-class citizen. Uh, they put it into Elastic Beanstalk last year at AWS reInvent. They announced uh, support in EC2. Uh, it's funny. I was watching the Twitter stream. There were some uh, some providers out there that said, "Oh, Docker is this really new thing. Maybe it's something that will help us differentiate from Amazon." The problem is Amazon's there, and they've got <laughs> tons of people working on it. Yeah, we laugh because we know not only is Amazon big. They, they, they spot the trend, they move fast, they can put resources and make smart decisions as right. to where to go. So the ecosystem's hugely important. The big announcement today uh, is the Open Container Project, or OCP, not to be confused Another with OCP. the Open Compute Project. <laughs> uh, I kind of said that it's really easy. You've got OCP for hardware with OCP, you've got OCP for software with the Open Container Project. It's the container runtime and container format to make a discussion. Uh, there was actually, you know, the, the shutter, uh, the, the photograph moment was Alex Polvey of CoreOS standing up and shaking hands with Solomon, say there's an olive branch here because, you know, we, we've got kind of the container wars going on as to, you know, whose runtime are we using, whose management and orchestration we're using, who's going to monetize this, Jeff? So at least down at the runtime layer, we've got, uh, you know, Docker, Google, Red Hat, CoreOS, uh, you know, a bunch of others in there trying to have, you know, a, a foundation in place 
the Linux Foundation is, is getting involved here uh, so that what Docker does is going to plug into a lot of things. Uh, the, the, one of the other big announcements was uh, they've got what they call Docker Experiments, right. uh, and it's Docker Network is a big thing. So Docker bought a company called Socket Plane, uh, a bunch of Cube alums that we've actually had on the program, uh, Madhu, uh, Venegopal, and Brent Salisbury who joined. They'd worked on Open Daylight over at Red Hat. We interviewed them last year at the Open Networking Summit. Uh, you know, friends of mine, uh, you know, good guys. And I mean, I can tell you, they've been coding this day and night and leveraging, you know, the network here. And now they've got, um, you know, network capabilities working with the ecosystem. So companies like, you know, Weave, Cisco, uh, and Nuage, uh, and VMware are all, you know, getting involved here. So, you know, networking and security were two of the big gaps that we saw. You know, Docker, the, the project is getting involved. Docker, the company, is, is you know, getting people to, to work on it. So, you know, it's exciting and moving real fast. So let's shift gears a little bit, Stu. Let's talk about customer traction and customer tech. If you say it's early days, but clearly a lot of people are behind it. What's the word on the street in terms of the customer adoption? Yeah, so so first of all, Jeff, I, I'm psyched because we're going to be able to talk to a lot of these customers. We've got, uh, you know, some of the big web companies, people that you would expect to be here. Pal is coming on the queues. Orbitz and Shopify are going to be on. Uh, one of the showcase uh, accounts that they talked to the keynote is the the GSA. I mean, the government, you know, doing uh, what I'm told is ten massive applications are getting Dockerized and being put in the public cloud. So the question we'd have is, if it's good enough and secure enough for you know the GSA federal government to put that involved um, you know shouldn't it be fine for the enterprise I mean it was like when Amazon uh, had that big uh, you know you know government contract that they uh, you know fought over with IBM and when Amazon won that that was a seminal moment for public cloud the GSA is a good one Booz Allen Hamilton is working with them on that um, and it's uh, they, it's what they call the docker trust model um, and uh, you know so there, there's also the Docker Trusted Registry. So there's pieces in the ecosystem, in the project, uh, because Docker, by the way, is not a single software, it's lots of different components, kind of like what we see in Hadoop, what we also see in OpenStack, there's various pieces. You know, Docker Engine's up to 1.7 now. Um, they've got the little Docker machine here, the little stickers <laughs> for all these things. Swarm, Compose, um, you know, the registry. So yeah, there's so much here, Jeff. I, I mean, if I just had, you know, two days to just go into session, try to learn it all, um, because boy, it, it's, it's tough to kind of wrap your arms around it, but you know, we're here doing theCUBE, so we're going to extract the signal from noise, you know, get these great guests on to help share, you know, what, what's coming out of this, uh, you know, really amazing uh, you know, revolution. Exciting time, so Stu's fired up, we're fired up, thanks for joining us, you're watching theCUBE, we've got a full lineup, back to back, uh, all day today, all day tomorrow, we're going wire to wire. Join us at siliconangle.tv, click on the uh, on the DockerCon tab, also join the conversation at crowdchat.net slash uh, DockerCon, we're excited, our next guests are queued up, so we're going to sign off now, we'll be back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>